Engineering Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Harden, Structural Engineer and Chair of the ASC Orange County Branch Structural Engineering Institute. You can visit us online at www.taepodcast.com. This show explores the evolution of a career in engineering, the overlap of art and engineering, and also promotes engineering outreach and STEM or STEAM in schools. I'm so excited. Thank you, Yaz. Yaz Amrani with Corolla Engineers. My pleasure. He's uh, here today to talk about his career and also uh, exciting new developments with the Orange County's Infrastructure Report Card. So thanks. Thank you again. Really excited to have you on this podcast. Absolutely. You know, glad to be uh, be able to participate. And right. I think uh, what you're doing is, is uh, great for engineers and non-engineers who want to learn about right. uh, what we do. Well, thank you very much. I just want to start out, and if you could tell us a little bit about your role here at Corolla. Sure. Uh, so Corolla is a, a water uh, engineering, water consulting engineering firm, and by that I mean all things water, mm-hmm. water, wastewater, stormwater. And um, I'm the Southern California Infrastructure Practice Lead for uh, Corolla. Uh, mostly on the, we have um, basically two areas that we focus in, what we call inside the plant and outside the plant. Okay. And I'm the, the guy for outside the plant. Okay. So pipelines, pump stations, um, uh, reservoirs, you know, infrastructure uh, that's uh, not related to sort of, sort of inside the fence or inside the okay. plant. Okay. So I'm responsible for business development and project management and, you know, um, getting the job, doing it and delivering it to the client. Okay. With the, uh, highest quality possible. And <clears throat> tell us a little bit about your uh, background in school and college, how to do, I guess let's start there. Huh? Absolutely. Well, you know, um, I want it to be a interesting, you know, um, these days, you know, you talk to, to uh, younger people and a lot of them, you know, rightfully so, they want to discover what they want to do and try different things. I wanted to be a civil engineer since I was 12 years old. Okay. So I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Now, back then, I wanted to build bridges and mm-hmm. roads and, you know, the on the structural side of things. So uh, when I went to school, uh, I went to school at um, Syracuse University. Okay. And uh, I was exposed. The under, our undergraduate curriculum was fortunately very diverse. But again, uh, since my focus was structures, you know, I took a lot of structural classes. and okay. um, but, I, but I also took... Uh, environmental engineering and fluid mechanics and soil. So, you know, you were exposed right. to the whole thing. Uh, but uh, once I graduated, um, I went to graduate school at the University of Maryland in College Park in structures. Oh, you did? Okay. I did, actually. And <laughs> I got my master's in structural engineering. All right. That was my interest. <laughs> right. However, after I finished, uh, that was in the uh, in the 80s, um, mid-80s, and uh, we were in a uh, civil engineering wasn't <clears throat> doing too well. We were in a recession back right. then. And uh, so there wasn't a whole lot of uh, structural engineering jobs. And um, so I got introduced to, you know, I, I took a job as a uh, in a land development company uh, back in, I was back east in the, in the Maryland area. So I took a job there. And um, my first day, they gave me a, a rough grading plan and said, you know, grade this. And I'm okay. like, I went to school, you know, when, <laughs> you know, I, I can design, you know, bridges and all that to do, uh, to draw lines on a map. So anything that was, anyway, that was interesting. But uh, after about a year, I, um, uh, I got an offer for a more generalized civil engineering company. Uh, again, the structural engineering jobs were still not, you mm-hmm. know, uh, there were few and far in between. So um, I moved to another company that did general civil and their specialty was uh, roads and water, wastewater, stormwater. So oh, okay. I got exposed to that and oh, wow. kind of changed my whole mm. career, basically. Okay. And uh, that's kind of my uh, quick background in terms of how I got introduced to the okay. to the uh, water wastewater business. And you mentioned that uh, twelve years since twelve years old, you wanted to do civil engineering. Did you have uh, parents that were engineers or? I did. Well, my dad. My dad actually was a, a chemical engineer. Okay. So, the, you know, and I liked what he did. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, he told me good things about engineering. So that definitely influenced right. me. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, my brother also got his undergraduate in civil engineering. I have uh, <clears throat> several cousins who are civil engineers. Okay. So it was, uh, you know, it was engineering was very encouraged in my, okay. in my family. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I think that's so important is to have that early exposure, then people, it's an idea that they can think about, or at least they know it's an avenue. 
Right? Absolutely. Some Absolutely. people don't even hear what is it, what, what, what's engineering all about. Well, and, and more importantly uh, for us, what is civil engineering? True. When you ask right. them, when you tell them you're a civil engineer, they're like, what is that? Right, you know? right. And then you have to go to, you know, kind of explaining what we right. do. And then you and I met uh, when I was uh, undergrad at UC Irvine. That's true. And then you uh, volunteered to be part of the senior design curriculum where all the students got uh, got to interact with consultants and see more about the, the professional world when they get out, you know, rather than all everything they've learned in books and actually apply it. So yeah. how did you get involved in that? Uh, so um, I, when I worked, uh, when I started my career with that, uh, with my company, I was mentioning before, I was in their Maryland area uh, office, Washington, D.C. area. And then uh, I moved a couple of times with that company, uh, first for a project in the uh, city of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So I was, I used to work and live there. And then uh, I got moved again uh, for another project uh, in the city of Houston. So okay. I moved to Texas. So when I when we moved from uh, Texas to Orange County, basically, um, I started work for um, uh, for a consulting firm, and they were very involved with the UC Irvine Civil and Environmental Engineering affiliates. That okay. was in 1999. Right. Right. And uh, so through that uh, company, basically, I got involved with the UCI uh, Civil Engineering affiliates. And got into, and that was the year actually that we started talking about establishing this uh, capstone course mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. seniors and, you know, designing it. So that's how basically I got involved and I loved it because I'd uh, never seen anything like that before. I wish we had a course like that when I went to school. Right. Because it was, uh, you know, everybody that was on the, the affiliates, you know, we put in our, we said, we got to design this so that, you know, when... Um, uh, when students take this, they get a real taste and flavor of what the actual world right. is about. Right. Uh, from the conceptual part, also all the way to putting together, you know, preliminary mm -hmm. set of uh, plans and specs and you know, right. cost estimating and all that. You know, it's funny. Uh, I was I also specialized in, in structures uh, as an undergrad, but um, as part of the capstone. Actually, I got a grading project, <laughs> so I had to <laughs> balance the cut and fill on a side and. Uh, it gave me it gave me a good appreciation for for all the other stuff that's out there, you know. So it was actually good. I was at the time I was I, I wanted to do you know the bridge project, right? But uh, I get, did give me an appreciation for everything else that's going on on the site. So. Absolutely, yeah. No, it, it's definitely good. And my experience with uh, land development um, served me very well mm -hmm. later on. You know, learning to do cut uh, cut sheets and right. cut and fill calculations and all that. But uh, it, and that's the I think the beauty of civil engineering is because we have all these different. Uh, specialties. Right. Um, now we, you know, as we go into our careers, we tend to specialize more in, in one area. Right. But it's good to be exposed because mm -hmm. uh, there's, uh, uh, you know, when a project comes up, it's not just a structural problem or a water problem. It tends to touch on all the different disciplines within civil engineering. So it's good right. to have a, a good working knowledge, at least of what's going on. Right. Well, let's jump into the report card. You are a, a past president of the Orange County branch of ASC, and then now a, a, a chair of the committee that puts together the report card, right? Well, uh, co-chair. Co-chair, okay. Yeah, we uh, started the, <clears throat> just to uh, give you a quick uh, background on the report card, uh, we started the effort on the report card within the UCI Civil and Environmental Engineering Affiliates okay. also. Okay, And it was very... Um, very refreshing because uh, <clears throat> some of our members are also ASC members. Okay. And ASC had just come out with their first ever national report card a couple of years earlier. I'm talking about 1999 right. at, the, uh, at the time. So we, we said, well, why don't we do a report card for Orange County? Uh, so we started the discussion within the affiliates, and then we talked to ASCE. And, um, you know, we started putting together the plans and um, basically, um, you know, developed an executive committee and, you know, all the different groups and released the first report card for Orange County in 2001. Okay. So that was the, that was the first one. And I believe we were one of the first regions in the country to ever <clears throat> produce a report card, uh, certainly the first one in California. And then right after we did ours, L.A. County also developed their report card and then Inland Empire. So it, it grew. So mm -hmm. it was a very good thing. And then um, I was the chair of the first uh, report card effort. And then because of the fact that it's an ASCE, we wanted to keep it an ASCE-UCI mm -hmm. collaboration, kind of a, 
uh, give it the uh, academic flavor because we had um, uh, several professors from UCI on mm -hmm. um, on our committees. Um, uh, we decided that moving forward that there will be a chair from ASC side and a chair from the actual UCI side. Okay. So we've kept that tradition. It's very unique in that sense. Uh, we released an update to the 2000 and I'm sorry, uh, the first report card came out in 2002. And then we did an update in 2005. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, we updated it again in 2010. Uh, and then um, this, uh, the one that we just released on July 21st is the 2016 version. And uh, again, I was the co-chair from uh, the ASC side. And we had uh, Professor uh, Farzad Naim uh, from UCI. Right. And he's a structural engineering uh, right. professor. Right. He's a bridge engineer, right? Yeah. 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 A bridge engineer and, and PhD. So yes. So he's now uh, teaching, has been teaching for quite some time. Right? Yeah, he has. He, right. uh, he's, uh, he's uh, an expert in that area. Right. And uh, uh, we were very fortunate to be able to have him oh, as excellent. our co-chair. Yeah. Well, it's a very comprehensive report. You evaluate uh, like a dozen different facets of our infrastructure from aviation, electrical, flood control, transportation, bridges. Uh, it seems just a vast undertaking. <laughs> How does it start? How You must have to rate all different projects or, you know, facilities, projects. Uh, how, how What goes into assessing Orange County? <laughs> Absolutely. Great question. Well, early on when we were doing the planning for the first time, we said, <clears throat> excuse me, we wanted to make sure we have a document at the end that's, um, that has two key ingredients. It's both credible and defendable. Okay. Because, um, we wanted to, um, we wanted to do this, do an honest evaluation of what we have, obviously, as engineers and, uh, kind of let the chips fall where they may. Because the, the point is to, uh, to show the condition of our infrastructure and then uh, any needs for improvements or investments mm -hmm. uh, that we need to we need to make. As you know, uh, infrastructure, um, I like to say, doesn't run on air. You know, it takes right. money to <laughs> uh, to uh, renew it and, right. or maintain it. Right. So uh, in that sense, we, we started with the ASCE's original methodology mm. uh, that they had come up with. But we went uh, a little bit further. Uh, so we started out with um, uh, looking at three main areas, condition, mm -hmm. capacity, and operations and maintenance. And then uh, through the years, um, we added uh, some additional uh, criteria such as security, depending on the mm -hmm. category. And then in this latest version, we also added um, resiliency, okay. which is a key element and sustainability. Uh, so what we do is uh, those, were our, those are our core criteria. And then um, our, um, uh, tell you a little bit about our, how we're set up. Uh, we have our executive committee, which oversees the, the, whole, uh, the whole work. But then the real work of evaluating the, uh, the condition, capacity, operation, security, resiliency, uh, sustainability is done by our working committees. Okay. So, uh, for example, the 12 categories that you mentioned, each category has a working committee uh, that, um, you know, we... Uh, we basically recruit the chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, we we try to uh, we tend to uh, uh, try to get the people that are the most knowledgeable, that the best technical people that we can get, mm -hmm. and then we let them. Well, we encourage them to basically uh, form their own committee. So they go out there and recruit their oh, committee okay. members, basically, okay. because they're the experts in the field. They know the folks who work in that area, um, and then the working committees basically uh, gather data from any and all sources mm -hmm. related to, you know, what they do. So, um, so these could be reports, these could be master plan documents, mm -hmm. these could be um, the um, surveys that they send out, that we design and send out to uh, most of the municipalities. Okay. And then uh, we, uh, the working committees gather that information, they crunch the numbers, analyze the data, and they come up with a grade. And the grade are also quantitative. Um, for example, we set uh, general guidelines on the percentage for, how, uh, you know, what percentage should be condition, mm. capacity, operation, oh, okay. resiliency. So we give, them a, we give them general guidelines. But for example, security is a key e element in certain categories like aviation. Sure. However, you don't have security necessarily in transportation mm -hmm. because, you know, freeways, you know, anybody can access it. It's not a restricted right. 
thing. So some uh, working committees take that, uh, some of the categories and or the points for that and distribute it to the other categories. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to be 100, obviously, is a top grade. And uh, just like when we went to school, 90 to 100, 80 to 90, okay. that's how the ABCD is, uh, is graded. Okay. And once, uh, once they do that, they also develop a narrative for that particular area of infrastructure, which is the actual report. Okay. And with a grade. Now, what we do, because uh, just like any technical paper, we strongly believe since the beginning that this needs to be peer reviewed mm-hmm. by folks who are, uh, you know, policy makers or, poli- uh, you know, are involved at that level of managing that particular type of infrastructure. Okay. So we also form, um, in addition to our working committees, we have what we call um, expert review or advisory uh, committees. Okay. And these are smaller committees that basically once the working committee's, uh, you know, a report is done and they grade, they forward that to the expert review group and they review it for consistency and making sure that it's, um, it's peer reviewed essentially okay. from a technical uh, point of view. And then uh, they make the corrections, send it back to the working committee. Working committee finalizes it. Then they send it on to us in the uh, executive committee we review it for um, consistency in terms of format. We're right. not, you know, making any changes uh, to the uh, content. But mm-hmm. um, when you look at the report card, you see that every category has a certain sections: an introduction, a policy right. consideration, right. funding. Mm-hmm. So we we basically format. It's like an editorial review, right. and then um, once that is finalized, that's you know um, basically. That's how the report card gets uh, gets put together. We have another step. Once everything is finalized and done, we also send it to ASC National. Right. ASC National has okay. been reviewed also. Um, and we get their comments back as well. Uh, we implement it. And then, uh, you know, once all that is done, then we release the report card. Okay. So it is a very long process. You're dealing with a lot of, um, a lot of folks in different technical areas. Mm-hmm. And as I said earlier, it's a it's good to have worked in all these different elements, like I've done right. transportation, water, you know, um, et cetera. So, um, so once once all that is, uh, you know, all this work, it takes a takes a really long time. So it typically takes about a year to put something like this together. Okay. We started the planning for uh, this report card back in. Uh, I believe March, April of last year. Okay. And, uh, you know, it really, we started, you know, once we recruited all the chairs and everything and we got going, it was June Mm -hmm. and uh, July of this year we released it. It's interesting how your experience being, having, having, touching so many different disciplines within civil engineering leads you to, you know, co-chairing the report card. You probably never thought 20 years ago you'd be involved in something so uh, such a grand scale. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, we, we, I never thought that. But interestingly enough, and this, this may sound corny to your audience, but I really, one of the reasons I wanted to be a civil engineer was to, um, to help people. Okay. Uh, to build things. Right. You know, for, for public good. Right. Um, in fact, um, you know, everything that we do, civil engineers, is for the you know, public benefit, right? Even in land development side, sure. land development side eventually, you know, once the development is mm. built and you know people move in, you know, they get right. to enjoy all the all the things that civil engineers have built. So this came kind of naturally in terms of civil engineers do a great job in designing and building infrastructure. However, once it's done, it's kind of people forget about it and they move on. Right. Uh, but you know, infrastructure needs to be kept up to date and maintained sure. and renewed on an ongoing basis. So this is a great tool to keep it in the forefront and keep it in the spotlight that say, hey, hey, uh, it, it takes money to, to maintain this and our taxes are not, you know, right. going to pay for all this stuff. A lot of this is uh, uh, is uh, is not just a you know tax that you pay. We're, especially in Orange County, we're a donor state. So all the taxes that we pay goes to the state and we get a fraction of it back. Right, right. So uh, if we really want to maintain our infrastructure, we have to kind of think outside the box and look at mm-hmm. other innovative, right. um, you know, uh, funding mechanisms to keep it going. A perfect measure, a perfect example is uh, Measure M mm-hmm. uh, right. for transportation. If um, Orange County and OCTA didn't have the foresight to implement uh, Measure M and it was a referendum that uh, the voters approved in the 90s, our roads would be in, you know, 
not so good a shape as, as they are right, right now. And then we, of course, uh, Measure M2 was passed mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, I think it was 2006 okay. uh, again. It was renewed by um, the majority of the voters because right. the residents of this county understand that it, um, it takes money to keep, the, keep right. the roads updated. And that half a cent sales tax is well spent. And OCTA has done a great job outlining the projects that they've developed right. and you know, implemented over the years. Uh, to keep it going. So that's, that's kind of an example of, um, you know, uh, we have to, um, uh, we have to implement different funding mm -hmm. mechanisms to, to keep this going. No, that's great. No, and I, I absolutely agree about the, the OCTA's use of those funds. It, we, we have a tremendous transportation system, uh, even, even if it, if it's sometimes backed up, uh, you know, at five o'clock. I mean, that, that's necessary in terms of how we use it an entire day. But uh, that transportation was one of the, the higher scoring, um, if you want to call them, uh, facets of, of this review. I think transportation got to be, uh, overall, we, we're at a C, right? Uh, yeah, the transportation actually, um, and this is, a, this is a, oh, nice. a kind of a good summary of it. Uh, we created, by the way, what we call a citizen's guide, which is a booklet. Okay. And we also have these, what we call mini report cards, and these okay. are designed for politicians because uh, they don't want to leaf through a right, you know yeah. oh, eight-page document. It's a, like, a, like a leaflet handout. Yeah, for a quick summary. That's and funny. they can put it in their shirt pocket and when they're okay. talking about it. So, so transportation is an interesting, um, uh, interesting one because we started with a C in 2002. Okay, went up to a, a C plus and to a B minus. So oh, we really we were doing good. But then we dropped down to a C. Oh, okay. And the reason is because, um, and we're seeing the results. I mean, nobody can argue with that. Despite our best efforts, first of all, we ran into the recession years. Right. And uh, some of these grades, by the way, is a reflection of um, we wanted to see what's post, you know, what we, uh, how are we doing post-recession. Right. Some of the, as you know, during the recession years, uh, we uh, all we did to a large extent was maintain. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a whole lot of, and I'm not talking transportation or, uh, across the board. Um, there was a lot of maintaining and not a whole lot of new capital improvement programs. Okay. So some of that is now just coming out now that you know we've been out of the recession for for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing an increased spending in some of these projects, but the other part of it is we're running out of space. Right. I mean, there's only so many lanes that you can, can have, have. <laughs> uh, you know, before you, you know, and the congestion, I mean, I've, I've lived here now uh, 17 years, um, you know, used to be, you could at certain times of the day, yeah, you'd be able to, you know, get on the freeway and, uh, and say, yeah, I'm doing good. But now it really doesn't matter what time you go on. It's right. a very narrow window that, uh, you know, it, there's, there's no traffic or right. very minimal traffic. So part of this grade is related to that. The other part is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have an aging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we're in order to keep up with the renewal and the expansion and all that, it takes money. Measure M2 generates a good bit of, of money, um, and, uh, but it's not enough to keep up with mm -hmm. the, uh, the demands in, uh, uh, in infrastructure, in uh, transportation. Right. So, in fact, what we, uh, what we put in here in terms of the... Uh, uh, you know, the infrastructure funding needs that we need for, uh, for ground transportation. We talked about really, um, on the magnitude of, uh, in fact, I can tell you that Measure M2 generates about $300 million a year. The county receives approximately $155 million a year from federal sources okay. for ground, transpor uh, ground transportation. However, the amount that we need for uh, keeping the, you know, keeping it up to date is in the, uh, uh, it runs into the billions. Okay. Right. So, you know, there is a, there's a certain discrepancy and we're, you know, playing catch up in terms right. of, uh, uh, you know, what we have versus what we need. So we're in better shape than mm -hmm. a lot of other counties, but it's still a catch up game. And when you move on to other categories like, um, you know, flood control, especially, right. uh, that's even, a you know, more magnified. I, I was reading, I think the the amount uh, increase that we need to to start improving is about 133 million, mm -hmm. but in total flood control needs 2.1 billion. Billion dollars. It's a 20 fold increase total of what we need over what we get annually. <laughs> Absolutely, and and in terms of uh, we we used to have by the way urban runoff and flood control uh, as one category, and we separated it in 2010. Okay, uh, because they're two specific, two different topics. Right. Even though urban runoff. 
sometimes runs into channels, into channels, you know. Right. <laughs> but um, um, if you look at the, and now we call it surface water quality. Right. So uh, flood control got a, a grade of a C minus, which has remained a C minus since 2005. Right. And surface water started out with a D, we're at a D plus, mm. which again, you know, doesn't make any difference. I mean, um, if I was back in school and I got a D and uh, next semester I got a D plus and showed that to my parents, I probably wouldn't <laughs> be sitting here talking to you today. Right. So that's not a great improvement. Now, now the problem is, um, well, flood control, as you uh, correctly mentioned, um, the what we have versus what we need to invest, there's a vast right. you know, difference. In terms of surface water quality, this is an unfunded mandate. Mm -hmm. So whereas with water wastewater, you can establish enterprise funds and all of us pay our water bill and sewer bills. Right. So it covers the O&M costs and the capital costs to a certain extent. Um, the surface water quality, there is no enterprise funds. Okay. And so, and by the, the requirements that, uh, stringent requirements that the State Water Resources Control Board has uh, implemented, uh, and of course the federal uh, EPA, uh, it's very difficult to, um, first of all, uh, adhere to some of those standards. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole different discussion. But even to do what's necessary to, to get in compliance takes a lot of money which the cities and the counties don't have okay. because there's not a right. flood you know, or water quality fund. Right. That's and really any good. additional taxes that, uh, you know, that if a municipality wants to levy, basically they have to go through what's called a Prop 218 process, mm -hmm. and it has to, you know, have, uh, uh, you know, majority, you know, the, the voters have to vote for it, basically. Right. And it's very difficult to do that because, again, People feel that we're, hey, you know, rightfully so, we're playing, uh, paying a lot of taxes right now, and this is yet one other tax. Mm -hmm. uh, except that in this case, the urban runoff affects our water quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you remember all the stories that, uh, you know, we had a few years ago back in the mid 2000s that uh, the beaches were closed in uh, Huntington Beach and, right. and whatever because of the bacteria count, and we thought that there was a problem with the ocean outfall from Orange County Sand District, it turned out it was actually the first flush. Okay. You know, the the stuff that gets accumulated in the storm drain system. Okay. And then when you have a rainfall, all that stuff gets washed out okay. to the to the beaches and then the bacteria count goes up. So it definitely Im impacts our overall quality of life. However, that's again the purpose of uh, a document like this to educate people that Unfortunately, there's uh, to be able to maintain, not unfortunately, but fortunately, we have a choice to be able to maintain our quality of life. We do have to invest in our infrastructure and not all of it comes from taxes. That, right. That's a general term that doesn't apply to in terms of what we need to do in day in, day out to maintain our uh, Interesting. infrastructure. I never thought about that, that. There's components that get funded, say transportation versus surface water. I was surprised that that like when you, when you were talking about the fact that surface water hasn't improved because it, it's actually been a pretty uh, hot topic over the last 10 years with, you know, new BNP measures, best right. management practices. So you would expect that, that would improve, but you're right. It's not a funded, it's not a funded element of the, of what we do. So yeah. it's, it's only going to catch, it only can only catch up. So, so exactly. it's, it's thinking creatively about new funding sources and thinking creatively maybe about new ways to improve our infrastructure. Absolutely, and and again, one of the one of my main focuses to is to hopefully raise awareness uh, uh, with the general public because as a, as an engineer, mm -hmm. civil engineer or engineer technical person, we understand you know what what needs to be done and you know we need to plan and you know maintain and build things, but this document is really designed for the general public and the politicians, the policymakers, uh, to educate them that. Again, it's kind of pay me now or pay me later concept. Right. Uh, anything that we do while we have a chance uh, in maintaining our infrastructure, uh, it's going to be much cheaper than when something fails. Right. And you have to replace it on an emergency basis. Right. So that's what we're trying. To, it's it's like well, you're save you're not saving anything right now by not spending any money on infrastructure mm -hmm. because down the road when it fails, you have to pay fifteen to twenty times more mm -hmm. um, to to get that rebuilt and at that point you don't have any choice that that's really important and the the measure you were talking about that was added this year was resiliency in terms of one of the metrics i think does that come from the flood control industry i know that's one of the army corps uh one of their important driving factors and, and resiliency as i understand it would be you can build something to be safe 
but there's always going to be something worse that comes. Exactly. So you have to, that's <laughs> exactly right. So it's essentially being prepared for un, the unforeseen and making sure that uh, you've accounted for that and, and you kind of build build that into it. Uh, but no, we have uh, we have obviously resiliency for water, wastewater, um, you know, the, the backup system that, that need to be there, the uh, for certainly for transportation bridges, mm-hmm. uh, for um, for across the uh, you know the, the spectrum of right. uh, of infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, and there's a couple of news uh, press releases uh, from UCI and ASCE in addition to the report. And one interesting note that caught my eye uh, is a statement that Orange County is also tran- back to transportation. Orange County is also transitioning from a suburban county to an urban county, and that's a really it's, it may be obvious to some people, but when I read it, it really stood out to me. Does that mean if we're transitioning to more of an urban county, or do we have to think differently about our modes of transportation? Are things going to do things need to change significantly to keep up with people coming in and jobs and infrastructure? That's a great point. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Chad. Um, that's very true, especially when, especially in uh, transportation. Because, like we talked about in a few minutes, a few minutes ago, we're running out of room in terms of building more freeways or adding more lanes right. or whatever. So we really have to think about uh, um, what I call, what we call, multimodal um, mm. um, ways of looking at transportation. So this involves transit, obviously trains, uh, light rail, uh, you know, anything that can help relieve congestion. And and at some point. Uh, that has to go into the planning uh, of, uh, of our infrastructure because uh, it's not that people are getting their cars and going to L.A. anymore. A lot of them are are doing that, but uh, people are not coming to Orange County and even people living here uh, like us. Right. You know, we go to work in Orange County. Right. So uh, there has to be a, um, you know, better planning in terms of how to move uh, passengers basically back and okay. forth um, outside of the, the freeway system right. and the streets. Now, uh, one more question on the report card. If you had to pick just your own personal preference, the most important element of infrastructure that we need to invest in, which would you choose? Other than all of them? <laughs> Other than all of them. I mean, I just, for me, I, yeah. it, I, I'm probably skewed. I'm a, a bridge engineer. Right. And transport, I love transportation. So for me, that I, I kind of can't see around that sometimes. But I, for, if I had to choose, I would say reading the report flood control right. would be... Uh, we, we want to avoid any kind of flood disasters, and, and that one seemed like the most in most need. But what, I'm curious what your opinion is. Well, I, I'm I'm with you on that. Both I think uh, surface water quality certainly and and flood control because um, and spe- uh, flood control. Um, I've seen pictures. I'm sure you've seen pictures of uh, uh, Orange County in the 20s or 30s when it was flooded. Right. There was nothing going on. So all of those are important. But but specifically for me. Um, I can't pick one up. I'll give you two. And okay. that's water and wastewater. Okay. Now, water and wastewater, we're doing good, better than most uh, most of the counties. The water, we got a, a grade of a B, and wastewater is a, uh, is, is a grade of a B also. However, our infrastructure, our pipe infrastructure, is an aging infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And we have different, um, you know, different parts of the county are uh, at a different, uh, different age in terms mm-hmm. of the infrastructure. Uh, we are very lucky that uh, the folks here do a great job through the special districts we have and, and uh, um, you know, as far as maintaining the water and wastewater system. However, these are underground. Mm-hmm. And there's that old saying, out of sight, out of mind. Mm. So we just have to make sure that we keep up with the okay. maintenance, uh, maintenance and renewal on an ongoing basis because we all know about what happened at the city of Flint. Right. Uh, and, you know, I mean, the, right. what they did with the water supply was one thing, but they're even their infrastructure mm-hmm. is was was very old, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so we don't want to we don't want to get to that point. And the reason I'm bringing this up is um, as a, not really a hobby, but as something that I've uh, I've started doing is I'm keeping track of all the water main breaks that are happening around Southern California for the okay. past couple of years. Okay, and if I've if, and I've averaged it, it almost every week. Certainly, no more than every two weeks, uh, we have a water main break here okay. somewhere in um, okay. in Southern California. Now, it's not right. necessarily in Orange County; it's in LA County or Ventura or whatever. But a couple of years ago, 
uh, we all remember what happened down at uh, uh, near UCLA Poly Pavilion mm-hmm. when that right. a 95-year-old uh, pipe right. burst right. and that whole area became a swimming pool. So, uh, and in fact, I did, an, I did an interview with NPR and they were asking me, oh. well, why do you think this, uh, this happened? It's like, well, it's the, the pipes is 95 years old. It's not really designed to be 95 years old. 95. We do a good job at designing and constructing these things, but every pipe has a, obviously a certain life okay. uh, life cycle. So I would say we just have to pay more attention to our underground uh, water, wastewater, stormwater right. pipes because uh, they don't get the same attention as mm. transportation and right. the stuff that's above ground. Right. And in the event of a of a natural disaster, if, if we run if we if our pipeline for water supply is broken, and that's the worst possible thing that could happen. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> then you know uh, you know we can live without electricity. We can live without, especially in California. Um, I mean, when the weather is right. you know climate is moderate, but nobody can live without water. Right. Uh, what what percentage of our water comes from the Colorado River? For it it depends by municipality in okay. Orange County. Um, we do get the majority of, uh, in general, we get the, we get a large part of our water, uh, from Colorado river. We get some of it from, uh, the, uh, uh, Northern California from aqueduct, you know, the system. Uh, but encouragingly and interestingly enough, the, um, the water districts here have really started to look for supplies outside of those for resiliency, for sustainability. So there's a lot of um, special districts that are going all the way to even like central California okay. and, uh, you know, contracting with, uh, you know, some of the water supply or uh, uh, underground aquifers, right. uh, tapping into those, you know, with, right. for a contract with, right. the, with the folks that uh, manage them and try to have backup uh, backups in that. Irvine Ranch Water District has done that. Uh, I know uh, some of the other special districts have done that to really minimize uh, the reliance on, um, you know, the uh, uh, the MET water, basically Metropolitan Water right. District water, and, um, you know, try to, to try to be sustainable. The other thing that we're also doing, uh, which Orange County is really um, one of the leaders in the uh, in the country, I think, is the um, the groundwater replenishment right. program that we have, which, as you know, is taking the uh, treated wastewater from Orange County Sand District, uh, treating it again all the way, right. uh, and uh, injecting it into the groundwater and recharging the aquifer system. Right. So, um, taking all of this again is thinking outside the box. It's not one solution; it's right. a multitude mm-hmm. of solutions. Uh, I think um, you know we're very lucky that we have um, uh, folks that are uh, you know that have the vision mm-hmm. and are thinking long term. Because obviously, water is the um, is, a, is the essential ingredient that we need uh, to uh, absolutely for sustaining life. Okay, and of course, you know, we're, there's other things that we're looking at, uh, such as desalination. Uh, so there's the Carlsbad plant that went online um, in, um, uh, in in Carlsbad, and uh, you know, other Huntington beaches. Uh, thinking about building a desalination plant okay. uh, to treat the you know ocean water as, as another okay. source of water. So uh, again, taken one at a time, it may not seem significant, but right. when you uh, look at it in aggregate, it certainly is adds up, and okay. it's it's certainly what we need to do as opposed right. to keep relying on Colorado River or right. uh, or other you know uh, sources that's that may exciting. not be sustainable. Right. Well, that's good. Good to hear. That's yeah. exciting. Well, I, I wanted to sum- summarize with the report card in the, actually in the report, there's a really nice paragraph on what, what you can do. Yeah. And I'll just read that if I can. Mm-hmm. So here it is. Citizens need to actively support policies that promote responsible infrastructure funding and spending and encourage their elected officials to take action. The consequences of maintaining status quo and the failure to act now will result in a downward spiral of decreasing transportation system condition and capacity and corresponding bleak future for the Orange County communities. And I I guess in addition to that, I would just say also you can get a job in engineering. If you're thinking about the first thing we get up, get up in the morning, you take a shower, you go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That all comes from civil engineering. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, we have a we have a section that um, 
David Letterman used to have a top 10 okay. list that he did. Right. We have a top 12 list. Right. Uh, and it's on uh, page 17 of the uh, okay. infrastructure report card that we list all the things, kind of bulletized oh, items nice. that uh, everybody can do. Okay. Uh, the, the biggest one is to read this document or at least, at least browse through it. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of good information in the report card. Uh, but if you ask me what would be the, the main element is anytime you hear about uh, the infrastructure, um, you know, write your your uh, local, uh, you know, assembly member or okay. state senator or your board of supervisors, okay, uh, congressman, senator, you know, a congressperson, senator. So it's um, it, it's not just an issue for civil engineers; it's an issue for everybody because, like you said, from the moment that we wake up till the moment that we go to bed, everything that we do um, is infrastructure, right? You know, water, you know, flushing the toilet, you know, the <laughs> flood control, the uh, stormwater quality, everything that we do is infrastructure and it has to be maintained and it's, uh, right. it's not free. So, so I encourage everybody to do that. And one other plug, if I may, absolutely, is that uh, we do have this report card uh, on uh, the website, Okay, uh, a couple of websites. It's um, www.asceoc.org, which is the Orange County uh, website. We also have it on the uh, what we call the state of California, ASCE California's okay. website, and that's www.ascecareportcard.org. Excellent. So uh, you can download it, uh, and there's uh, previous versions of that on the website as well. And I'll, I'll put those links in the podcast page oh, as excellent. well so people Thank can you. find it. All right. Well, a, a couple more questions, more on the personal side uh, and uh, in, in lines of the art of engineering. There's a couple questions I always ask uh, in the interview would be more on the artistic side. Is there an element to what you do that uh, has, uh, to be redundant, has an element of art to it? <laughs> you know, what, let me rephrase the question. In what you do on a daily basis, is there an element of art in your, in your work? That's a very interesting question. I think so. I think you have to be, um, <clears throat> I mean, the technical part is fine, but uh, you have to be able to uh, apply it. And sometimes we're dealing with problems that it's literally trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you can't do it by the brute force method. So there has to be some right. um, finagling and uh, uh, art, mm -hmm. you know, for lack of a better word, involved. Um, it, it's um, it, the way I, I would describe it is uh, all of us respectively um you know, you have to basically look at the uh, look at the situation, and then try to find alternatives that fit that situation, uh, but also rely on our experience, mm -hmm. uh, having done or encountered similar challenges or problems in the past. Is what fits the best. Um, the you know the um, you know some and some of the some of the things that we have to do may not fall into the technical realm. It mm -hmm. may fall into the um, public relations realm. For example, I'll give you an idea of speaking of water, wastewater. Some of what I do uh, involves doing uh, master planning for water, wastewater, stormwater, in addition to the, doing the design. But in the master planning, you know, you look at uh, the existing capacity, future capacity, and then try to come up with, uh, uh, you know, uh, improvements to the, to, the, to the network. Well, that all costs money. You know, that's, you know, you develop mm -hmm. the capital improvement program, and then that ties directly to rates. So mm -hmm. when you look at the rates and you say, well, this is what, how much money is coming in. This is how much money we need to mm -hmm. make it, make it work. That has to go to a vote of the, the folks. Okay. And that's the art part. So right. it's not, it's outside of engineering. At that point, you're, you're really a, uh, uh, you're trying to paint a picture and trying to be an advocate for infrastructure and, and uh, talk about this in terms that uh, people will relate to mm -hmm. uh, and say, yeah, I mean, it's not that, you know, this is another tax that, you know, they're trying to impose. This is, a, I use this system, I need right. it. But you have to be able to to talk the talk and you have to uh, relate to people. And uh, right. it's not just that, well, here's the formula and this is what it gave us. Right. And <laughs> so you have to pay five bucks more a month. That's well, true. That doesn't fly. Right. So uh, you kind of, in our business, the, the part that's interesting to me is the, interaction with the public. You have to be a coach. You have to be a, uh, a friend. You have to be a colleague. You have to be an right. advocate. You have to right. wear different hats to be able to uh, uh, 
turn into reality the division. Basically. Okay. And what what type of art or you know, hobbies do you enjoy outside of work? I love music. Okay. Music helps. I um, I I you know I taught myself how to play uh, piano. Did I, you? I don't play by notes. I kind of oh, play wow. by ear. Okay. Uh, so I love playing uh, by uh, um, keyboard or piano or whatever, uh, and of course listening to music. I enjoy music. Right. That's my relaxation. I, I enjoy all different genres of music and okay. uh, depending on the mood. Right. And that okay. definitely helps me relax. Did you play when you were a kid, or you you taught yourself later in life to no, play? No, as as a kid, I oh, kind of wow. learned. Uh, you know, I you know I love uh, you know music and I listened to it. It's like ah, oh, this would be cool if I can play. So wow. I, you know, took a few tries, but now I try to. To me, that seems that. the the most abstract way that our our minds work is to be able to hear something and then transpose that onto an instrument. It's amazing. Yeah. I can't do that. I'm totally inept <laughs> musically. <laughs> But uh, my daughters uh, really can do that, and it yeah. just amazes me. Yeah, it's it's all it's all the you know you probably excel at uh, you know uh, another area of art because I think as engineers we all have an outlet right. that true. that we right. do so whether it's painting or poetry right. or right. or something. But uh, yeah, it it um, it's something that I that I enjoy, and I, and I enjoy playing sports. Okay, uh, I love sports, and uh, uh, you know try to try to. Uh, Get in my tennis at least a couple times. Okay. A week. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, will you uh, entertain a few uh, uh, questions for an engineer? Sure. Okay. These sure. are surprise questions that come through email or uh, Twitter or whatnot. Um, these ones are from uh, from a student um, and kind of along the land, land development side. I've wondered this myself. Uh, the question is, where do where do our street names come from, and who gets to decide? You know, that's a that's a very interesting question. Um, I think, well, I know on the development side, when you, you know, it's a, a land development, the um, the street names, the basically the owner of the project gets to, Does, oh, gets to okay. choose the uh, the street names because uh-huh. that's private land. And right. uh, until it's done and it's dedicated and, the, you know, the municipality right. takes it over, it's it's private. Okay. So that's an easy one. And um, uh, so I'm familiar with that. So um, that's where that comes from. Okay. Uh, in the public, you know, for the public streets or whatever, uh, obviously a lot of these streets already, you know, have names. So I'm not familiar with how they originally right. Right. were developed. But I know for a new street name, there is, uh, you know, um, folks that can petition, petition uh-huh. and, uh, you know, say, well, we want this new street to be called this. Okay. Now, that's not binding. You know, it goes right. to the public works department for that particular city and they look okay. at it and they load it up to the, the you know sometimes the council looks at it and if they adopt it then it becomes right. that but it depends on the the municipal code of that city sometimes the it's within the purview of the uh, planning and the public works department and sometimes okay. it has to go all the way up to oh, the interesting council. yeah I've, we, we do land development projects also and um, i always see on, on the development plan is you know street a street b street c at the planning stage <laughs> yeah or even when the, even when we're doing the grading plans or retaining wall plans it's still street a and b c at that time i think the plans that get uh, uh become the uh deliverable sheets that get the contract plans still say those names but then ultimately at some point those more uh, interesting names take over <laughs> yeah and, and it depends sometimes they have a preference they don't i've seen uh, some Land development that they, the the streets are named for you know, the the kids or grandkids or something okay. like that. And uh, so it okay. it's just depends on how interested. If you had a motif of street names, what would you choose? For me, right to to put in. If you had twenty streets to come up with oh, names wow. for, and you you know sometimes you see more of a theme like scientists. I yeah. think in Irvine there's uh, I forget the street names, but you see that you know you see different themes. Would you go with a theme? What would you use? Wow, that, that's interesting. Well, for me, it would be um, it would be music because okay. because I love music. So I would probably like to uh, would go with some of the classical composers like Beethoven and Beethoven uh, Lane and, and Beethoven <laughs> Lane and Mozart Street <laughs> right, right. and and see for me that's uh, Strauss uh, okay. and a Bach. And oh, that okay. would be my that'd be cool. My preference. Yeah, I might go with uh, superhero alter egos. So you know, you Bruce go. Banner away or yeah, know, or yeah. Bruce Wayne. Yeah. You know, uh, that'd be funny. So, well, anyway, uh, thank you so much. It's been so exciting to talk with you, uh, both on your professional side and also with a report card and your interests. 
uh, who've been speaking with Yasna Emrani with Corolo Engineers in Costa Mesa, and you've been listening to the Art of Engineering podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff.